Welcome back to my channel family. I hope everybody is feeling good. It is super late, but I told myself that I'm going to put up another video or two, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Even though it's super late, I'm still gonna do it because I said I would. So I wanted to talk about why I'm not so religious anymore, why I don't really do religion. I'm I'm leaning really hardcore towards living in the spirit of God because this is how you become prosperous. I'm so serious about this. Let me tell you why. I don't know what I'm going to title this video. I don't know if I'm going to title it why I left religion or why I don't believe in religion anymore. I don't know. It'll be something. But I'm going to tell you why. First, let me read you the definition, the definition of religion. Um, the definition of religion is someone or something believing in or related to religion. An example of religious is a church choir. And an example of religious is a person who goes to church every Sunday and reads the Bible every day. Okay, so with that being said, that leaves absolutely no room for a person to ever be tested by God, which is something, by the way, which he promises to do. He promises to test us. But when you are in a community, it doesn't matter what community it is, and somebody that, I, that, that knows me will probably one day see this video. I'm not talking about just only one certain community, communities in general. Um, it leaves no room for God to test you and take you outside of his word. Yes, God, God's word is, is written in stone and yes, it's there for our guidance. Yes, th this is what I believe. What I also know to be a fact is God can take you outside of his word. He can give you, he can plant you so deep. And the reason why you, the reason why I use the word plant is because there's a difference between burying something and planting something. If something of yours dies, you bury it, you don't expect it growth from it, right? But when you're planted, when God plants you, he pushes you far down in that soil, right? He's expecting you to grow when you're in that hardship when you are in that fire when your entire life is on fire he's expecting you to grow when he plants you far down in there now when, when it comes to religion people don't allow room for that any everything that I'm gonna say here on this video this is not pertaining to every single person in the world yes we know there are exceptions to the rule that there are also people with very kind hearts they do things um, just coming from a kind place they don't expect anything back they give um, uh, charity they give without um, having to record it or tell somebody that they gave or just okay so we know there's exceptions to the rule but I feel like the majority of people are very harsh and hard on other people when God wants to take a person from being on a path of the wide and he wants to put them on the path of the narrow which means they're going to be by themselves very lonely God is so awesome in a way that he does it It doesn't feel good but he's awesome in a way that he does it now the reason why I'm not so religious and, and really so judgmental really at all anymore because of the things that I've been through when I realized that like I said he may have written something but if he decides that He's going to test you in a certain way and he doesn't give you some things to be able to do certain things in a certain way that the community does. A lot of the time, the community will reject you. They'll turn their back on you. They'll, this is not every single person from any community, of course, but this is from the majority. They will do something to make you feel uncomfortable in situations that it can't be helped. This is just God testing you, even when it comes to simply let's say you got a person got stung by a bee and they had a really bad reaction and they were in the hospital there are people in communities that will say like oh I wonder what he did I wonder what she did this person must be a bad person this 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 like that is what religion I feel like being over the top religious does to a person and okay somebody <laughs> somebody's gonna watch this and say why is this girl talking about she's not religious 
and she has a whole hijab on her head, a whole, cause she's covered up like Jesus' mother Mary, <laughs> talking about she's not religious. But if you're thinking that, I want you to keep thinking that. Why is she covering her body like Jesus' mother Mary? So keep that in your mind. Um, so when you are being over the top religious, it causes you to be harsh to other people, which that's why I don't do religion. It call, and even if you're not being harsh on somebody or trying to make somebody's life or rejecting them or trying to make their life even harder by pointing at them to say, look at them, look what they're doing. We're not supposed to be doing this. We're not supposed to be doing that. A lot of times people will sit by and be quiet. Even if you're not that person who's actually saying or doing those actions, you're a part of it just because you're sitting by and allowing it to happen. So that, I, I need to give a few more examples. That was one of the ways I slowly came out of being just super religious. Like, I don't know why he's doing that. I don't know why she's doing that. When we don't know personally what is going on in that person's life, and even when we do, sometimes God strips us of everything. I know he stripped me of everything at one time, of every single thing, family, friends. Like, when God wants to test you, one time, and I'll, I'll share something personal. Um, once we were kicked out of the house, instantly by the way no time to pack up anything no time to pack up anything i had to leave my house fully just the way that it was with things that i really loved and gifts from my grandmother gifts from my parents everything everything from both of my sons when they were first born you know like their footprints and all their first little things and every everything um I didn't have any clothes, clothing that I would wear, clothing to cover my body properly the way I want to cover my body. I had to go to work in the nothingness that I had. And every day I had this burning sensation in my chest that somebody that I knew was going to come walk into my place of work and point fingers at me and say, look at the way she's dressed and not in knowingly or unknowingly spread this around about me. Um, like, oh, she's, I saw her, she's wilding out. She didn't have her hair covered. She was wearing a t-shirt. She was wearing just whatever, whatever it is. I went to work feeling so sick every day, hoping like, I hope somebody doesn't come in here and see me. But that was all God gave me. God is beautiful. He knows exactly what he's doing. So even if he did write something in stone, and in, 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 in God's word, is, it's, it's in many books. That's why I don't like when, Muslims and Christians try to only battle each other and just like that is so annoying to me and it's mostly done by the people who's not even practicing anything they just want to be pointing their finger at somebody else saying somebody else is wrong but if you are moving in the spirit of God you would never even be like that we would accept each other and we would learn and grow with each other and we could respect each other even if we are not being like convinced of one word over the other we wouldn't come at each other in a harsh or angry or evil way. So, okay, I'm forgetting what I was going to say. So, yeah, when he gives you what he gives you, that is what he gave you to work with. If he didn't give you that to work with, he knows exactly what he's doing. Like I was saying, he may have written, there are, his words are written, right? We, we know basic, we know rules and things like that. But if that's not what he's giving you to work with for that time, that's not what he's giving you to work with. And as people, we will see somebody in a time of testing and just do them so wrong. Just do them so wrong. I just have an ugly heart towards them. If they are married or if they have children, just have an ugly heart and reject the family. And like I said, this is not everybody because even in my case, that wasn't everybody. There would be people randomly texting me like, is there anything you need? Because they knew my situation. Is there anything you need? Like there were community members that did, you know, test, uh, would text message me and, and, you know, just checking up on me. They didn't even live in the same state with me, but they knew what was going on because being in a community, you're usually aware of big things. Um, and they're usually big because they've been going on for so long that now it's coming to an end. It's big. It's big towards the end. But anyway, um, so people are so harsh and so critical of other people and we're, we're calling, we're pretending and looking like we're good people, 
people we're rejecting and hurting people just because God has put them in a situation that they don't have an option but to do certain things, you know, uh, live a certain way. If they don't have something, they don't have it. If they don't have a way to get there or be there, like, I'll give an example. If there's a certain kind, this is a weak example. I can't think of anything right now, but um, like I was saying with myself, if they're a certain kind of clothing that you would wear and you don't have that to wear, God just judges every person on their intentions. God judges every person on their intentions. If he didn't give you something, then he didn't give you something. But like I was saying, people are so ugly to one another and it's all, you know who the ugly people are? A lot of times it's those very people who are holding the door open for you at places that will get on line and, and make up rumors about you or say ugly things about you like or it's the people who it's the people who I'm drawing a blank here I'm really tired it's super late um, who pretend like they want to help but they're really telling all of your business because they're, they're trying to hurt you they're pretending oh we need to help him um, let's see if we can get, he he still doesn't have a car yet and I don't know what's going on with with him working but he still doesn't have a job and as a community we need to fundraise for him or fundraise for her because they're still not in a good place but they're really gossiping about you they don't they don't care like it's things like that that's like this is why I feel like so many communities, and, and, and I'm intentionally not saying monks, Christians, Muslims, I'm specifically not saying that on purpose, any group of people. There's a reason why so many groups of people do not, they live in a spirit of stagnation and backwardness. Living in the spirit of stagnation and backwardness because we love to pull each other down, even when we're doing it secretly, and if we're not doing it, we're sitting back silently and allowing it to happen to other people and it's just, like I said a lot of times when it's like groups of people there's no spirit of God moving through those groups of people and that's why there's a lot of stagnation a lot of times a community will stay just the same with no growth over 20 years because we're holding each other back we have these rules that we go by and and the thing is I'm not gonna call anybody dead on the inside people are alive on the inside but what's happening I feel like what's happening is God talks to everybody on the inside right um, he gives you an idea if you are a person who's afraid to go out and and move on those ideas because God will lead you every step of the way usually he does not give you the big picture but he will give you things step by step for you to take care of to get to whatever that vision was when you are in religion there's no room for that there is no room for that. You are going by what the group is doing because you are trying to be a good member of the group, but what happens to a person who wants to have a laundry mat or if they want to have a car wash, they may have that idea on the inside, but a lot of times, even if they get started with it, it kind of falls off because you're trying to stay in your religious group. You want to, you want to please God and you want to be able to have these things that you'll be able to help the community with, and like I said, in every community, yes, we do have professionals that um, bring their profession to the community. And if they are able to help with their business, that they are able to, they could help with it. Like, if, for example, if there's a dentist, a lot of times community members will go to that dentist who is a member of the community. Like, um, I don't want to get too far off track, but if it, <clears throat> being in community and being super religious, when you have that idea down on the inside of you, a lot of times that seed can't grow because you are being too religious, you're too busy pointing fingers, you're too busy trying to look a certain way in the group, in the community, you're too, too busy trying to be around for every occasion that's happening in the community. You, and the reason why this is happening because people like to be name callers in communities and if you're a person who goes off to the side and you're not seen very much, people like to say things like you're a fence sitter or, we, or they'll say things like, Oh, we don't know what he's been up to we don't know what she's been up to and, and things like that so it kind of makes things just so difficult and that is not the way that we're supposed to be that is terrible people should be able to do whatever it is that they need to do to to build whatever it is that they're trying to build to have whatever business that they're trying to have and be able to bring the good that they've done 
to the community and be available to the community. And that, I feel like that, I, I do, I don't want anybody to have any ideas that I don't believe in community. I believe in community. But I feel like a lot of communities live in the spirit of stagnation and backwardness. Something wrong will happen to one family and they will talk about that one thing forever, that what that one thing, that 10 wrong things, I, I'm, I shouldn't say that one thing, they will talk about the wrong that happened to them forever and blame their stagnation on that wrong thing, <clears throat> as opposed to listening to what's going on deep inside and allowing God to lead them each step of the way to be able to accomplish whatever it is he needs to accomplish. What ends up happening is once you don't listen to that deep down inside what's going on, what's going on the ideas that you have and, and what you would like to do, um, if you're a person who even has you know a, a big idea once you don't do that God will take that from you and he will give it to somebody else why because he's God and he's whatever he wants to get done he's gonna get it done doesn't matter if you don't do it he's gonna take that idea from you. he'll give it to somebody else who's actually gonna do it so that is the problem what I have with super religious communities doesn't matter where in the world they are <clears throat> I did honestly I didn't have a really bad experience myself I did have some bad experiences but that was by design by our Creator he will put you in situations where he will have your family come against you which is one thing but when your family comes against you and then they say you were the one who did wrong to them that's where the pain comes in because they did you wrong but they will tell other people the friends of the community members other family members that you did wrong to them and that's where the pain comes in God is so awesome and so perfect to allow that to happen so for anybody who's like has family members I don't care whether they're your parents your cousin your niece your nephew whoever that is by design from God it's a beautiful way he's so awesome in every way he knows exactly how to get you to lean on him that is exactly what happened to me where I was leaning on people too much he didn't want me to do that so what he allowed was for people to do wrong th not everybody some people family and friends some of them to do wrong to me so that I would not lean on them as much as I was trying to lean on them for comfort and ease because of the pain that I was going through. He didn't want me to do that. He needed one-on-one -on -one with me. He needed to pull me just to be a student so that I would be able to hear him a lot more clearer. I need to make a, a, more, a few more videos about how to hear God clearer through fasting and praying. And when I say praying, if you're a Muslim and you're watching this, I'm not talking about our five daily salah all the time. Like, yes, we're gonna do that, our five daily salah, we're gonna do that. But I'm talking about when it's not even that time to pray, to make your salah. I'm talking about talking with him and inviting him in your life and everything that every single thing that you're doing, breaking your sleep to get up, to, uh, to clean your body, to talk with him and, and ask for his guidance, ask for his forgiveness, tell him exactly how you feel, cry. Tell him exactly, you don't say, to talk and say, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to think, I don't know what's going on. And not to say that you always get your answer ex immediately, because sometimes you won't get an answer and you will still be on fire that night and that next day. Um, but he needs to do that to be able to change um, something inside of us, whether it is to have us be more assertive, uh, more aggressive, healthy aggressive, not if you're crazy, health, more aggressive, if you're, if you're a person who needs to uh, forgive, by the way, I know I just said a few minutes ago, some family members and friends uh, were wrong to me. I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm not, and I wasn't even angry when it was happening. I, and I never, and I never was. Probably should have been in some cases, but that's really not me. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to say that, like, I'm, I'm not upset about anything like that. And I wasn't even when it was happening. I wasn't, because mostly I didn't even know it was happening when it was happening. Because remember my other video. I look at people the way that I am so when I would feel like something was not right I would come in and second guess and say nah and I would just move past it it was what was was happening um, so I forgot what I was saying um, anyways so yeah that's that's how I became less super religious and 
just looking at some families saying, well, that's, I mean, that's how they are. I mean, or sitting back and saying nothing just because I don't really know any details. And like that was their life at, the, at that time. But now that I've experienced the hardships that I've had to experience by myself, God is so awesome. He knows how to get you to pay attention. He will have family and friends do either wrong things to you to where you really can't, you know, be in their presence that much, or, or in, in, in some cases, and this is personally, sometimes they were just too busy for me. It wasn't like they were trying to do me wrong. They were just like, okay, that might be your situation, but like, talk to you later. I'm at the airport. <laughs> I'm about to board the plane. Like, so everybody wasn't trying to do something wrong is what I'm saying. Um, and I'm not trying to come from a bitter place. I'm just saying that sometimes when God has... Uh, people doing you wrong he really wants you to pay attention to him because that is how you're going to get to your end goal and that's how you're going to manifest what God wants you to manifest and it comes with no sorrow it comes absolutely with no sorrow you guys go google up some YouTube manifestation videos and you will see some people are like well I, I manifested this car right in my life and I manifested right back out of my life that's because you're busy trying to um, do too much of your own manifestations like allow God to lead you there and it will come with no sorrow and it won't come with stress either and pop up so many things have popped up on me things that I've even forgotten about and not that I tried to manifest it but um, is it would be things that I've written down that I wanted to achieve um, or certain weights certain com comfort and ease that I wanted I would um, write it down because like I said, I used to write a lot more. I still write a lot. I used to write a lot more often than I do now. Um, and not that I would try and like I said, manifest it and get stones and set them out to charge them in the sun and all these things that people turn to. And I understand why they turn to them because sometimes your hardships can make you start turning to all these other things. Should I make this a long video? I might make this a long video. I might break it up, I don't know. But, um, I would journal some things like I, I would like to do this I would like to do that and um, a couple of years later like it would pop up and I'm like and I would have it and then I would realize like weeks back like oh my gosh I wanted this like and I have it now so like I said I don't I don't sit around trying to manifest I never do that actually so like because I feel like that's I'm just gonna be bumping my head on the wall too much I'm focusing on that and just uh, I feel like that goes nowhere um, I mean, you could manifest things because like I said, and if you guys go back and watch my other videos, I will tell you, you've heard me say before, the unseen realm is more real than this physical realm that we're in, this physical body. So they will bring you the things that you want, but it, it definitely comes with sorrow. Like I had a friend who's like, I, that she lost, she would always lose things because of the way that she would get them. The way she was getting them was wrong. And she knew and she just admitted she said she feels like she loses her um, she has a lot of um, what is it called when, when the company comes into repossessions and things like that um, even for her camera her expensive cameras and laptops and her camera equipment and her vehicles and her, the apartments that she would get she would get these, like these luxury apartments and she said she was always feeling like she was losing things um, just because of the way she was going about getting them um, so that's why I said you always want to have what God wants you to have. If it's in his will for you to have it, he'll give it to you. And like I said, it comes with no sorrow. So that's why I started heavily leaning so hard towards just moving in the spirit of God because he leads each and every. He doesn't expect us to be cookie cutter. Read some of the stories before Christ stories. Read some stories of the Sahaba. You will see. He, God has never been, Allah, God, never been cookie cutter for anybody. So yes, we have our rules and policies of religion. And I do believe that sometimes that, that is a good core and it could be a good foundation. But if God decides to take you off that path and decides to plant you because he wants to bring you up and give you something uh, big, which will come with more responsibilities, but you will be living in you will be living in his favor. A lot of times he takes you out of the big crowd 
so that he, you can hear him just that one-on-one -on -one. and when that happens a lot of people come against you so with that being said like I really didn't want this to be 30 minutes um, I might I don't know I'm not sure what I'm gonna name this video but that's how I stopped just doing so much religious things like just of people in their hardships and then me and other people like we're looking at them side eye like we're saying things about them and just it just makes it that much worse and then we have the people who pretend like they care but they really don't care they're spreading the business it's just it's the, it's really rough it's really rough um and when i say it's really rough this is not what i'm experiencing right now so i i, I have noticed that i do get i get some ridiculous comments but i've noticed that i do get a lot of sweet comments because somebody will be thinking this is um my situation right now i told you guys before years ago my life was on fire everything every single thing so um that's why i became less religious and i don't care about trying to show up for people because people will turn their back on you in a hot second in a hot second you'll be left high and dry in real life god takes you on the highs and lows he, that's that's what he does and who are we to say that somebody else is crazy or somebody else is this or somebody else is that that's why I just can't I just can't if somebody if God decides that he wants to put a test and trial on this person or that family that is what they have to go through there are processes to everything everybody can't rescue you out of your situations God knows exactly what he's doing because he needs to create a certain kind of person inside of you so that he can give you the gift that he wants to give you and you'll be able to handle it well because he has taught you in the way that he teaches you usually you have to go through a lot of heat a lot of heat so I think that's all I'm gonna say about that for right now I might upload another video tonight um, on how I started praying I'll end off saying this how I started praying was my life was so upside down and it was so chaotic um, with tests and trials I couldn't sleep so you know what I'm just gonna keep this one long video I couldn't sleep at night I couldn't sleep in the day I couldn't sleep at night I was exhausted I was tired but I couldn't sleep and a lot of times when people can't sleep including myself I used to like get up and start cleaning I would clean already clean things I would get up and re-clean the refrigerator all things that I didn't even need to but I could I was restless I couldn't sleep and one day um, I said I'm going to stop that's ridiculous that doesn't make sense why am I getting up and cleaning I'm going to start praying because a lot of times I would wait for the Tahajit prayer that's the prayer that comes in before the Fajr prayer if, if somebody's a Muslim and they're watching this I do have a few Muslim subscribers but if you're watching this that I used to count on just to make the Tahajit prayer and Fajr prayer and the you know our five daily prayers that we pray but no, I, my prayers started to become more intense, more frequent, more often, all through the night and even throughout the day. And I'll tell you, even when I'm driving, just my thoughts um, for if I'm at an appointment or just whatever it is, including him in every, every second of my life, the same way that you do with family members, your children, your, you know, your you're in communication with them this is how I started to grow my relationship with God got really really strong I couldn't sleep I like the worst thing the, all kinds of attacks were happening attacks when I say attacks they were attacks by the enemy anybody who's thinking that I'm talking about a person type of enemy I'm not I'm talking about the enemy of stagnation and backwardness the enemy of poverty and debt these these are enemies poverty and debt the enemies of generational curses from both sides of the family and that sounds so weird right generational curses think about both sides of your family and think about the major stronghold that one side of your family or maybe both sides of your family has like maybe starting a business and losing that business that kind of a generational curse is what I mean not that just sounds like I'm talking about a devil with red horns or something I don't know <laughs> I don't know but um, I will be dealing with what are the kind the enemies that just live under that Jezebel principality 
and it was really hard to break free from that because I didn't know how to pray and I think I told how to pray in one video I, I didn't know how to pray like I would just be like just please rescue me from this like I, I don't know what to do and then what happens is when you're especially up in the quiet of the night and you're just talking you may not be going into Rukur or sujood like but just when you are just talking watch how God just starts dropping these ideas into your mind telling you how to pray to pray against these evil plans of people because even people when they say oh she's always like that oh he's going nowhere in life those are people who are putting these things on you by saying they may not even know it that's just I hate to use the word witchcraft because witchcraft is, is such a broad thing but um, so yeah dealing with like I said all of those attacks of the enemies and like I said those enemies of poverty debt living in fear these are enemies like I said I don't want somebody to think that this is a person maybe their cousins coming for them or maybe somebody at work or school is coming from them not that kind of enemy all of these things are coming against your life and making things so difficult you don't know what to do and I would be like praying like just increase my angels and and like help me fight in the spiritual realm like you know just protect me like I didn't know what to say or what to do but the more often I prayed and the harder I prayed and the more I just cry like I don't know what to do like every single thing that I would try to do it was always like a major blockage like just why can't why why is nothing working out for me and um, and then not having um, people to lean on to help comfort you like I said, God is beautiful. He knows exactly how to set you on fire to get you to pay attention to him. And then once you are paying attention to him, you have a relationship with him, you're talking to him in the night, you are, because a lot of times, like I said, uh, evil people, they'll get up in the night and they'll pray against you. If they are that type of person, they will make prayers against you. That's why you always want to not pray against the person, but you want to pray against their evil plans and ask God to abort their evil plans. Because like I said, these uh, unseen beings they go inside of the person because they don't have like a body they need to go inside the person to have the person do these things uh, against you so I feel like I'm all over the place I didn't really have too much of a plan for this like an outline for this video I, I really didn't but I just knew I need I wanted to get this out there um, I may upload another one I'm not sure but Get a relationship with God and talk to him on a regular basis. Don't include a lot of people and watch how God comes through for you. Watch how he will just straight tell you, don't go here, don't go there. And watch how he guides you. One time I had to move and um, I was like, I'm going to rent a U-Haul truck. And I'm glad. And I was like, well, I'm glad the storage place is right next to U-Haul. And I go online, I'm Googling prices and I'm like, okay, so I'm probably gonna just spend $40 on a U-Haul. I'll get this done in one day. Um, what ended up happening? I was looking for the U-Haul place, which at this time, at the house that I lived in, the U-Haul place was like two minutes from my house. But I was driving back and I drove, I drove too far past it. And I was like, oh, I didn't see it. So I turned, I made a U-turn, I turned back around and I'm like, and I drove past it again. I'm like, where is it? Like where's this U-Haul place? So I, I turn back around and I'm driving past it. So I'm like, um, oh, you know, there it is. But I have my left blinker on, but the car next to me on my left side was not allowing me to go in. They were staying like right with me. I don't know if they noticed or not, but I couldn't get in that left lane. So I had to go all the way up, like before I could even make a U-turn, had to be like three or four lights up and I had to make a U-turn and I saw another storage place. So I'm like, well, I'm driving past this place that rents trucks and it's a new storage place it was, it was fairly new because um, I remember driving past it when it was being built um, so that car wouldn't let didn't let me in so I ended up driving way further up then when I was able to make a u-turn I decided since I saw that place with the rental trucks and the storage building let me just drive in there and see what they're about let me just see what they're pricing although I had my mind set on U-Haul y'all the deal I got to rent the truck for four hours for $10 and first month of 
holding the storage, having the storage for a month, free. I didn't even need the storage for a whole month at all. When I tell you how God will guide you and lead you, don't be an angry driver. If there are holdups and things like that, it's for a reason. Uh, some people know this, like this, that truck didn't let me over. I had to drive all the way up, but then I turned and I saw another storage place. I went in there, they rented me the truck for $10 uh, for four hours. And I literally had the truck for probably an hour, I think. An hour, maybe an hour and a half, doesn't matter. But that was just God's guidance. He was like, don't go to the Uval place. You plan on spending $40 there, you plan on getting a storage there, just don't do that. I have one that's better for you. That's why I say we plan. That's why people say, not just me. We plan, but God's plan is much better. So I, I went there and awesome deal. So that's why I started to really just strengthen my relationship with God because I realized, man, the honey that he pours on you just for just sticking with him and be, sticking with him through the hard times, sticking with him in times that you're like, it can cross your mind like, it, like it crossed my mind I was like man am I cursed I was like this can't be real like this this fire cannot be lasting this long this cannot be real like it lit that crossed my mind like I have no idea what's going on and why is my life just so chaotic everything I want to do like I, I couldn't do it and like I was saying okay I'm gonna leave this for last I'm gonna wrap this video up I really am that is the reason why and I understand why people get so disappointed they don't they don't understand why they're a good person they worship God like they genuinely just a good person they don't do wrong things to people they don't understand why is their life having so much heat on it they don't even realize how special they are in the eyes of God because we're taught we're conditioned you do good you receive good we're conditioned to think that oh I'm a good person good should be happening for me right away right this is how most of us are conditioned to think but in actuality and reality that's not always how things are you could get your your blessing you could reap your reward soon but sometimes you might not sometimes like I said God needs to plant you down far because when he shoots you up when he grows you you will be ready for whatever that gift is that he's gonna put in your hands so what I was gonna say and like I'm gonna wrap this up I really am I'm not gonna make this I'm at 37 minutes this is not gonna be an hour but like I was saying I understand how people could be upset and say certain things that they say about God and not that I'm a person who's done that but when I hear people who do I understand exactly where they're coming from because you wonder how could you be a person who's been so grateful and so thankful for everything you had that, that you had and you're a person who helps other people and then he sets your whole life on fire and then like you're drowning you can't get up but you're like what is going on that is how God grows us. He need there are processes to everything. And when he wants to clean you up, he puts you under that pressure. And it's literally like he sets your life on fire. You wonder why you are having financial problems. Like, why is all my money going out the window? Like, how is this happening? Like, oh my God, my son broke his arm and now my, his insurance is not gonna cover this part of the of his therapy and just, oh, like, just things that's like, come on. Um, when they start to say wrong things or they start turning into what the devil is, what, why, why did I say the devil? What these unclean spirits are showing them they start gravitating towards that because it's very it seems very similar to what God wants to bring you because that because he knows he knows what God has for you so what he does is make you start having a belief and a hope in numbers in seeing symbols and signs such as well I saw two black birds today so I'm hoping for some kind of financial miracle tomorrow have you know like I said numbers like and if you know it will carry you a long way it, it will it will carry I saw 888 on somebody's license place I saw 1111 I saw 555 look at my face when I tell you this those kind of things that feeling that that brings you when somebody is telling you if you see these numbers this is what this means I give you my word 
those kind of things can carry you a long way. Why? Because they all have these positive meanings behind it, right? And that carries you through the day because you're like, okay, at least I saw 444, so I know that there's progress happening. These are what these unclean, unseen beings hope that you stay in that realm because why? It diverts you from actually getting to know the sweetness of God. Why? It, those unclean, unseen beings will bring you some of the things that you want because they want to keep you trapped there. Just believing in 11, 11, 5, 5, 5, all the number sequences, all the, all of the, just when people are saying one last day of Mercury retrograde, like they want to keep you locked in that space where you are getting some of the things you want and you are feeling hopeful because you saw 999, you saw 333. And then that feeling that you get like, you're like, okay, I'm going to be able to make it through the day through the day things are looking up that is exactly what they want why because you will not be paying attention to God you will just be paying attention to that small cookie crumb that they're giving you and they'll bring in your attention to this your eyes are just happen to catch 11 11 somewhere like they hope and like I said it, it it carries you through the day because you're now you're feeling hopeful in something because God's tearing you up and then now these unseen beings, they give you this idea. Believe in these crystals. These crystals are gonna help you do this. Believe in 555. That is, it's gonna let you know that you're changing in a positive way. They hope, and like I said, they'll bring you cookie crumbs of things that you want, like, oh, this worked out for me. And so now you're strong in that belief and they hope to keep you exactly right there. They hope to keep you right there so that you will never get to know your creator. So. With that being said, it's, we're at 41 minutes. I probably could talk longer. I'm not going to. That's just way too long. Somebody clicked out. I hope nobody clicked out. But um, with that being said, I am just going to say good night. I want to say thank you if I have any new subscribers, old subscribers, people who haven't subscribed but they watch my video, people who watch some of my videos and they decided I'm not for them and they unsubscribed, I want to say thank you to everybody, okay? So, you guys have a good night and inshallah, God willing, I'll make another video and give me a thumbs up just to be nice, okay? Thank you. Bye.